Good morning. Good to see you all and welcome to St. Barnabas. Uh, a few announcements as we get started today. Uh, the first one is that in between our services today, we had Advent wreath making. And so if, if you were there for it, thanks, and you, you already heard my spiel. But if not, we still have some Advent wreaths left over and the candles to put in. So before y'all leave, do make sure you go grab a candle or the styrofoam, or if you have a, a wreath already at home, grab the candles to, you know, refresh it for, for this year. And while you do, make sure you grab one of these. It's on the, the table out in the narthex. It's basically uh, kind of some little prayers, a little family devotion to say while you light your, your Advent wreath and the directions to do so. So, um, so kind of your, your guide to your home advent, if you will. So make sure that you, you do that. But there's still, I believe, plenty of candles in, in Ramsey Hall if you want to grab one to do so. Okay, some other <clears throat> announcements for us. And these are on the back of your bulletin. First, just want to point out that our outreach for November, December is still to help out RIP medical debt as we work to uh, relieve medical debt here in our area. Uh, the second is that now that we're in Advent, it's time if you want to make a donation for Christmas flowers. That's what we use to get all the beautiful wreaths, the beautiful poinsettias, and all the things like that that we decorate the church up with for our Christmas festivity. So if you'd like to make a donation towards that, you can find out everything here uh, in your bulletin. The next announcement is uh, we're going to have our ECW, that's Episcopal Church Women, the Christmas party is Saturday, December 4th, starting at 5 p.m. in the EYC building. That's kind of the, the building over by the playgrounds, the separate building. There's a few little instructions here on you know, what to do for the Dirty Santa game, um, who should bring desserts, who should bring appetizers, and kind of some other things to go along with, with that festivities for the ECW. So um, read that if you'd like to... to uh, uh, come and play along, but all are in, uh, welcome to come and do so. And then the last announcement is for our uh, beloved, becoming beloved community. This is a, a group um, kind of around racial conciliation, and so they are doing a lay-led Advent healing and reconciliation service. Um, Make His Path Straight is kind of the, the theme for it, and that's going to be the evening of December 9th at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And again, all are welcome to come and, and be a part of that worship service with us. Okay, that's all the announcements we have right now. Again, there's always lots of things going on, so make sure that you have access to our emails and Facebook and things like that as, as we move further and further into our Advent season. If you're uh, visiting with us today or new to the Episcopal Church, the, the number one thing to help you out are the, all the many books in front of you can be a little bit overwhelming. The red book is the Book of Common Prayer. That's the one where all the service liturgy is from. The blue book is the hymnal, and so that's where all the singing happens. Uh, we could probably um, put more books in there, but we left it with just those two right now. If, if it's too overwhelming with just those two books, it's okay to not have a book in your hand and just sit and be and kind of um, recall the presence of Christ in, in with you and around you. Um, but that's usually a, a big hip f a tip for people new to the Episcopal Church. Okay, let us now stand and we will sing our opening hymn as we get ready for worship.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is a name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 25 responsively by whole verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of our salvation. In you have I trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember my love sins and my youth and my transgressions. Remember me. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble to the right and teaches his way to the humble. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see, your, see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. 
And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blamed less before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. And Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. 
Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So if you couldn't tell from our redecorating in here, uh, today is the first Sunday of Advent, the start again of the church year, the preparatory time to get us ready for Christmas, and such an incredibly exciting time, at least it is for me. I know many of you are probably beginning to think about, you know, when will you hang up the greens, when will you deck the halls, when will you light all the wreaths, what new and fun Advent calendar did you get this year, right? And for me, I also think about all the wonderful carols and the songs we start singing in church, and then, of course, the sweets, the parties, and the friends that really, you know, uh, classify this time of year. I love it. I really love it. But two weeks ago, I made you all a promise and we would have a conversation today, a very, very serious conversation. When is the appropriate time to put up your Christmas decorations? And so here, here is that conversation. Because honestly, it is a question of what to do with Advent itself, right? Why is it that we do Advent? I mean, we in the church, especially in the Episcopal Church, we uphold this season of waiting, this season of preparing, because while the rest of the world seamlessly just moves from Thanksgiving to Christmas, we in the church say, oh, no, 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 not so fast. We have to wait now. There's a whole other season in here. But I'm going to admit to you, and don't tell the bishop, but I already put up my Christmas lights. My Christmas lights have been up for two weeks now. <laughs> but I made a deal with Lauren, though, that we could start decorating the outside of the house, but the inside needed to remain fall because it wouldn't feel right having Thanksgiving dinner, eating my turkey with Santa Claus staring at me from across the room, judging me, right, all that kind of stuff. And so over the last two, three weeks, we've been decorating and we've seen houses on our street left and right also putting up their own Christmas lights. See what it was, some guy on the street jumped the gun and put his lights up the day after Halloween. And so the rest of us have really kind of <laughs> done the rest too. Now for me, this is the earliest I've ever put up my Christmas decorations. And as soon as I did, when it got night out, when it got dark, I went outside and just looked at my lights almost like Clark Griswold in National Lampoon's vacation. But I went out and just stared at the lights, and I felt this sense of joy as I was doing it. I felt peace as I was looking at it. And it occurred to me that, you know what, I, I need this right now. At the end of another long year, the, at the end of 2021, which we've come to call the ugly step cousin of 2020, Right? I, I really needed that in my life. I needed those Christmas lights. In fact, I need those decorations. I need the church to look like this right now. It's almost like a type of therapy for me. We always joke, and maybe you've heard someone say it before, of, man, you people need Jesus. You ever heard that? Man, I need Jesus. I need him. I need that sense of peace. I need that sense of joy. I need that sense of fulfilled hope right now. I need my friend. I need my Savior. I need Jesus. I need that kind of outlet, if you will, to take my anxiety, my worry, to take all those uncertainties that surround me and just lay it at the feet of Christ and say, Jesus, you're going to have to take it from here. In a way, that's why I've put up my Christmas decorations already. 
I needed that feeling in my life. I needed that reminder of the holiday season, that reminder almost that everything is going to be okay. And the holiday season, especially Christmas, is always that reminder for me. And so I tell you, if, if you need that reminder in your life too, go ahead and put up your decorations. It's going to be okay. And as it turns out, though, I believe it's, that's actually closer to what Advent is supposed to be. Sure, Advent is the time of preparation, the time of waiting. But the reason it is those things is because Advent is when we feel that yearning in our heart. Advent is when we feel that pull on our soul to have the presence of Christ with you, in you, for you, around you. That's what Advent is supposed to be. Advent is the yearning for the presence of Christ. I mean, I think that's why we're here today. Because we know that's what Advent is. Advent is when the church year starts over. And so Advent is this time of rebirth, this time of new beginnings. And we need that start over too. We need this renewal, this spiritual rebirth that comes along with it. And so here it is. We've come to church on the first Sunday of Advent with this renewed sense of discipleship, this renewed sense of fulfilled spirituality, wanting to double down on our faith game. And so we've come here to be reminded of those beautiful stories of Mary and Joseph welcoming their baby, those beautiful stories of the shepherds in the field, those beautiful stories of the messages of angels we've heard on high as they bring their announcement of hope and love. We've come here today to be reminded of that. And we show up and Jesus says, there will be signs. The earth will be distressed and people will faint from fear and foreboding and the powers of heaven themselves will be shaken. <sighs> we wanted Advent and we got the apocalypse instead. We got the end times today. Ah, 2021, you got me again. I know you're thinking this isn't that warm and fuzzy holiday message we wanted to hear that warm and fuzzy message to kick off Advent, to, you know, really spearhead our spiritual revival. I mean, we just said Advent is all about yearning for the presence of Christ. But for some reason or another, with the presence of Christ, we get judgment and all the second coming stuff. It's only a few hours into Advent, and it already feels like it's going to hurt. But fear not, because there is hope. There's always hope in this because in this morning's gospel Jesus also said to be alert at all times be alert praying that you may have the strength to escape these things and to stand before the son of man be alert to stand before the son of man if we're looking for our yearning for the presence of Christ there it is this is what we want right we want to be these people of faith. We want to be alert and awake and ready, as Christ says. We want to be there for when he comes back. We want to be the ones that Christ is, is talking about in this gospel, prepared, standing before the Son of Man. And so our gospel says, be alert to get busy and to start doing. And you say, yes, Jesus, I'm going to do it. How? What do we start doing? comes down to how do I be better? How do I do better? Jesus says, be alert, great. What does that mean? I think as it turns out, asking that question of how do I do it is actually the beginning of the Advent life. And if you've ever asked that question, then it turns out you're already doing it. You see, to be alert is to yearn for the presence of Christ. To yearn for the presence of Christ means to open your heart, to open your eyes, to see the world around you, to see the world right in front of you. The here and the now, to be alert and see that. Because the here and the now is where we find our place in Christ. And the here and the now is where Christ finds his place in you. So yes, Advent is this time where we prepare for the coming of Christ. And we simultaneously look back to the birth of Christ while also awaiting the coming King. But the true Advent, the true 
uh, waiting for Christ that we're preparing for is the real presence of Christ that is revealed right here and right now. The real Advent comes through the presence of Christ that you make known in the world by the way you treat others, welcome others, forgive others, and love others. The yearning for the presence of Christ is to prepare for the birth of Jesus within you. That yearning for the presence of Christ is to recognize that your soul is indeed God's soul. Your spirit is his spirit. And so as it turns out, the advent that we're waiting for, the advent that we're preparing for, is you. You are the advent. So therefore, go and do it. Be it. Give it to someone else. And don't be afraid to put up your Christmas tree. To God be the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As you're able, please kneel for our prayers of the people. The prayers of the people are form two found on page 385 of the Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jake, our bishop, and Michael, our priest. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray, we pray for Igreja Episcopal Anglicana do Brasil. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Mark's Cathedral in Shreveport and their clergy. For this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people remembering especially Joseph, our president, John Bell, our governor, all those in elected office throughout our nation and all those in governing positions around the world. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Blythe, Claire, Connie, Eric, 
Earl, Emil, Eric, Kirby, Madeline, Mariah, Marilyn, Max, Richard, Sydney, Toby, Victoria, Wes, Zoe, the Bass family, those suffering in the wake of Hurricane Ida, those with COVID-19 and the medical staff charged with their care, and for all those dear to members of this congregation as listed in the bulletin. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. We pray especially for the postulants of our diocese and for those seeking holy orders, including Cindy, Countess, Katie, Benjamin, and Brian. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Helen Luce. Pray for those who have died. I ask for your prayers for all those serving in our armed forces at home and abroad, especially Dylan, Gabe, and Junior. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. As found in your bulletin, let us say together the St. Barnabas Mission Prayer. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you. Give us courage to be like our patron, St. Barnabas, who gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel. Grant us the courage and grace to pursue your kingdom, minister to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy. Make us of one mind, one body, one heart. You need it through Jesus Christ to be a beacon of love in this community. All this we pray for the love of him who lay down his life for us, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now as found on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share the peace. Okay, y'all have a seat just for a little bit. If you're visiting with us today, thank you so much for coming and being a part of our family here at St. Barnabas. Here in just a second, we're moving into the Holy Eucharist. In the Episcopal Church, we recognize the bread and wine to be the real presence of Jesus Christ offered for us. And therefore, all baptized are encouraged and welcome to come and, and, and receive this sacrament, no matter what flavor of Christianity you're baptized into. As we come forward, we'll just kneel here at the altar, holding your hands up like this. I'll come and place the bread in your hand. If you'd like to just receive a blessing,
just cross your arms like this and I'll know to give you a blessing. After the bread is in your hand, Quentin will come behind me with the chalice and we're still in tincting, right, the fancy word for dipping. And so just take the bread and dip it and then uh, you, you can eat it. Um, after the service, of course, we should still have some leftovers from our parish breakfast and, of course, some coffee available. So please stick around um, and just enjoy fellowship with each other. And don't forget to grab your Advent wreath candles and things such as that. Okay, do we have any birthdays this coming week for our birthday blessing? I know we have one. <laughs> Okay, so please turn to page 830, prayer 50 for birthdays. Hey, little Hollis, how old you turn? Two? Two? Two. <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Hollis. <laughs> okay. Do we have any anniversaries this coming week? Seeing none? Okay. In all things, let us continue to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and, made us in, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Beloved, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Behold what you are. Become what you receive.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for us assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.